Hey guys, pack your bag and come with me and go explore this amazing Italian city that's full of arts and architectures called Florence. As always, I put together a list of travel tips for you guys. Take a screenshot of it. And now let's go check out the top 10 things to do in Florence. So number one, let's start off with Uffizi Gallery. It is the most visited museum in Italy. It houses many priceless pieces from Italian Renaissance from artists like Leonardo da Vinci and Sandro Botticelli. Something to keep in mind, the queue for this museum it is quite ridiculous. However, one tip, go during lunchtime, the queue is much shorter. And another thing to save money, on the first Friday of every month, it is free entry to Uffizi. Alright guys, second one on the list, let's go check out this amazing and the most famous square in Florencia, it is Piazza del Duomo. In the middle of the square, you will see this, and I'm sure you're not gonna miss it, it's Santa Maria del Flores Cathedral. It is incredibly beautiful, it is actually the third largest church in the world, so just take your time and soak it all in, and if you look up, you will actually see the dome that people actually go all the way up to the top for the panoramic view. So this museum came about because of the cathedral workshop or the OPA that was set up in order to oversee the construction of the cathedral. So some of the original pieces were moved over here in order to preserve. So with that said, you will see, you know, some amazing art pieces from like Michelangelo to Donatello. So the baptistry that is in front of the cathedral, it is quite incredible. Inside you get this 360 views of just, you know, sheer decoration with murals and paintings. And inside you can actually see the dome, even though from the outside you can't really tell that there's um, a circular dome at the top. Are you ready to climb over 400 steps in the bell tower? Now if you do, you're gonna get rewarded with this amazing um, panoramic view of Florence and especially the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Flores. I do have to say, the view on top of the bell tower is quite incredible and actually some people said, even the Florence local said that it's actually better than the dome. Yeah. Alright, so the third one on the list, it's going to be the most important center um, for the political scene in Florence, which is Piazza della Signoria. This is very important square because it went from a city hall into an actual palace that housed the Medici family. And if you are in Florence, you need to learn about the Medici family because they have such a huge footprint in Florence. So an interesting story about this palace is that when Cosimo Medici married Eleanor of Toledo from Spain, uh, they resided in this palace for some time, but then eventually Eleanor said that the palace was too small and no garden or anything, and so eventually she bought another property on the other side. And then they started to build a corridor that connects this palace to the new palace that eventually will pass through the famous bridge of Florence and you will see it in a bit. So as you know, Florence has so many viewing decks that will give you that panoramic views. So with that case, this um, palace also has a viewing deck so you would go all the way up and it gives you such a great view even though it's not that high up but you get that a closer look at the cathedral and especially the square right in front of the palace. So here's the bridge that I was talking about that was built as part of that corridor in order for Queen Eleanor to walk without you know, exposing herself to the public 
going from the old palace of the uh, Palace de Vecchio to the new palace, which is Palazzo Pitti. So with that said, another interesting thing is that the jewelry shop used to be actually a fish shop on that bridge. Well, number six on the list, which is the newer palace, or in this case, the bigger palace, it is Palazzo Pitti, that Eleanor essentially used all of her savings in order to buy the property and to just, you know, build out the palace and also the garden right behind it, which is actually quite beautiful. And this is actually on the other side of the river from the Palazzo de Vecchio. So with that said, um, this palace itself, it's also included as part of that first Friday free entry along with that Uffizi gallery. So if you're not tired of the view of Florence yet, I mean honestly who would, right? Such a beautiful city. You have to go up to Piazza Michelangelo. At the top there is this beautiful church um, that is sitting on top of the hill that gives you such an incredible scenic view of the city. And then when you come up to the main square where the statue of Michelangelo is, uh, or the statue of David, this is where you really see Florence, you know, just a 180 landscape. So number 9 on the list is actually an herbal shop. You might be surprised but this place is quite traditional and it's quite well known. It is such a great shopping experience. Even if you're just window shopping, I highly suggest that you just walk into there and really experience it. Number 10 on the list, definitely not the least, you have to eat your way through Florence. We start off with the Florentine sandwich at Alentico, Venaio. With that said, there's a branch for this shop outside the touristic area, much less crowd. And on top of that, I give you this tip for the gelato, take a screenshot of it. And if you, for my opinion, if you want the best gelato in Florence, it's at Vivolo. I literally can remember the taste, but hey, it's just perspective based. As always, thank you so much guys for watching the video touring Florence with me. Eat your way through Florence with me on top of that. If you like it, please do subscribe. See you next time.